What's up, friends? This is Manny, and welcome to Sting! Six times fully maxed here on the Dagon Robot, a weapon nobody ever uses, but with all the maximum damage skills we can combine, can this Mark III Sting actually become some somewhat useful, I wonder? Let's see. Uh, also, Paralysis Drone. I want to figure out, can we lock down targets with a single salvo? Um, and the Manny Pilot? Me? For the maximum damage output, okay? So let's go and do that uh, and find out how useful Sting can actually become. Because there's a reason you never see anybody use that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I would still say it's a terrible weapon overall. It's not good at all. And you should never consider investing your credits into upgrading that, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, still, the video here serves as a, as a bit of a display as how much you can put into Sting. How much can we do um, to ma max it out? And how will it look like when we really do that, okay? With a very careful playstyle that we need, because we only have one phase shift as a defensive measure, Everything else is basically death for us if we get caught in the open or against a brawler or something, right? Um, so here, this guy, see, he dies poop, from my... Ah, here we go. Uh, from my dot effect. He just died from that because uh, the sting has corrosion. But also the initial hit is not bad. Look at this. They are dropping his shield. Okay, this guy over there. Once he walks back out of cover, um, they're dropping the, his shield. I will fire and look at his health. Drop. That is not bad, actually, for one hit at 600 meters range with a very unique auto-aim that the Sting has um, that allows it to auto automatically pre-aim and, and uh, shots at every enemy with an auto-aim, but you don't have to spend time locking on to the enemy. That's a very, very nice thing about Sting. Right now, you see also Overdrive is active. Overdrive is active, nuclear amps are stacking higher and higher. Uh, but it's not all the way. But look at the damage coming in. It's not bad, man. And the dude is getting locked down as well. And I'm not sure. Sometimes it seems I lock down people in one salvo. And the next time it seems I need two shots. I don't quite understand why. In the recent video with the Volt six times, the people, when I had fully charged Volts, they would always be locked down in one shot. But not with the Sting. Sometimes it's one shot and sometimes it's not. I, I, I don't quite understand why. Um, but it is still interesting to see that you can do it. You can get people locked, sometimes with one single shot, and sometimes you need two. Here, another guy who died from the dot effect. <laughs> I love it. It's you, you shoot them, you th they think they, they survived the shot, and boop, they're dead. Wow, that's 50% of, I think, maybe an Auchun that I hit. This is a uh, Newton Titan. Oh, and also, uh, important to say, maybe, maybe we're gonna see, we're gonna kill three Newton Titans with this setup now, in this map. All right, so let's get ready for this, ladies and gentlemen. And also, if you like the content here, you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, please. Uh, hitting that notification bell to be notified, because, um, you know, we're going to bring a lot of War Robots content here on the channel, and uh, I'm trying to make the best videos that are possible to make. <laughs> let's see. Even with Sting. Yeah. Even with Sting, I try my best. Um, so there's a Skyros Ball in his resistance, and he understood that I'm killing him. He realized that he gets killed by me and my corrosion, so he understand. So he goes into a offensive mode. Uh, he basically changes his strategy from rolling defensively to offense, dropping the ball state and going full in uh, damage mode with his uh, weapons. Uh, but thankfully, I can defend myself even there. So there's the first Newton Titan that will fall victim to my stings. Here we go. Pop. Ah, I need one more. It seems okay. Okay, so first one gone. There is two more to kill. That guy here, shield is gone, now he's taking damage. Thankfully, he's busy looking the other way. I don't know what he's doing, uh, but uh, I can shoot him from behind. And here we go, the dot effect. And the third Newton spawns in perfectly, replacing the others. He didn't spawn in any second too early or too late. Just when I was ready to shoot something else, he came. And I'm not the only one shooting him, but I'm definitely the one doing the most damage, it seems. And then comes an Ohokochi. Ohokochi really late into the game, and he just has no problem dropping my shield and my, my me after, well, basically, uh, a second later. Also, it kind of the Offion was also the reason here. Now, the reason I left this in and didn't edit this out is because I wanted to show you how much damage these ridiculous Fulgu and Tonan still do. Look at that poor Ao Ming up there. And I'm not running a lot of firepower. Look at this, it's almost the whole Ao Ming gone in one freaking shot. And I'm having only two over uh, no two damage modules on there. 
The others are um, two times repair amplifier, and it's a Titan with only two light and one heavy Titan weapon. Still, almost one shots the Alming. What the heck? I don't know why they allow the, these weapons to perform like this. I'm actually pretty sure I know why. Uh, but it's just so freaking wrong. It's so wrong. Same as with the Newton choke, still having 800 meters range. Sh should have been a day one fix. Should have been 350 meters, not more. Game is game is really hurting. Game is hurting so much, man. The game is hurting so much from this. The whole health, the whole fun in the game is hurting so much. Due to those Newtons, the choke, the Fugler, the Tonans. Oh boy. Anyways, let's keep on going. Uh, one salvo and the uh, rest of that Auchun was gone. There comes another robot who apparently didn't expect to be in my crosshair already. <laughs> he thought he can pull, pull a shot off and get back in cover. No sir, I already had you aimed. And yeah, so plenty of things. Also, there's something very unique happening. Have you ever lost a weapon on your robot because you were using a friendly battleship? Like, you were using your own battleship to give you something and it killed your weapon. Has that ever happened to you? It is happening in this match. I'll, I'll show you in a moment, okay? I think two minutes from now or something like this. Maybe three, two, I don't know. Um, I'll show you. I know where the sequence happens and I warn you early enough before it happens. Um, I'm running the roulette battleship here for more damage output because, you know, this uh, added corrosion that the roulette does increases your damage tremendously. And I think this is also how we just got a kill. Um, and this is a max damage build, so I think it's an interesting idea. Also, the roulette gives us double uh, durability extender as well. So it keeps us in the game and it adds a lot of damage to the enemy. It's a good battleship in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so we're running this. And I'll be activating the roulette battleship when I have very low HP. Uh, but I still have all six of my weapons. And suddenly, pop goes one of my weapons. You'll see it in a second. Nothing else shot me. <laughs> uh, so now I prepared you for the moment already. You are already in the knowledge, but um, now we just need to get to the situation and I can show it to you. All right, so let's hammer in some more damage into the enemy base. Uh, that corrosion, I think, was not quite enough to kill the Orpheon in the air, but almost. Okay, we have a Scorpion coming, teleporting in. Where is he? There you are, Scorpion. Face shifting for a second and then turning around because they, sh they, they teleport in with stealth, right? That's the problem with these scorpions, is that uh, they, when they have the legendary pilot, they often drop in and have stealth in the first two seconds, and you can't even fire back. Um, so, yeah. Also, why does the Dagon get shot by the battleships uh, through his shield? That is so weird. So the Dagon robot shield does not work like the Typhon robot shield, because I have heard many people comment in the, um, in the beginning, in the early days when the uh, uh, Dagon came, they said, yeah, you can't bypass the shield you can't enter the shield on the Dagon because uh, it's like the Typhon shield it's not true because battleships on the Typhon they will only drop his shield and then the Typhon robot will start to suffer damage aside maybe from corrosion from a roulette battleship or something uh, but precision strikes uh, they go into the shield of the Typhon typically uh, but the Dagon robot always gets hit and the shield is unaffected by it it's really bad for me because I'm having no healing I have no healing ability. This is a max damage build. I have a face shift, but no healing. I guess we could run the... Um, oh, that's a decent damage. We could run the unstable conduit to, dead, to get 10% more damage when we use the ability every time. And we can heal ourselves as well. But the thing is, that would take the overdrive away, you know? <laughs> so it's a bit of a trouble uh, here. With the overdrive makes things complicated because I want to keep the overdrive running. But I still want to be able to defend myself with something. So, a healing will defend my will defend me, but at the same time, it will uh, basically heal past the overdrive. Which brings me back to the point where I say, hey, just make it so that once the overdrive activates, it's active and it will stay active even though you heal past. Now, this is the moment. I have all six weapons. I activate my battleship, and pop! There goes one of my weapons. You can go back to the situation and check it out if you want. Um, you'll see that I have all six weapons running and active at the same time. Nobody is firing at me. I was at 30,000 something health. I activate the roulette battleship with double durability extender. I get 6,000 additional gray HP or max health, right? So I end up with 36,000 health, but the game pop takes a weapon from me. What? <laughs> that was so odd, I've never seen that before. That was probably not supposed to happen. Here we have another Skyros ball in his resistance. And he has a legendary pilot, you can tell, because the Volt guy next to me, or a Weber, 
uh, who, by the way, fires his weapon wrong. Dude, you need to let the weapon reload before you fire. Uh, he's not dealing any damage to him. Um, and uh, if he didn't have that legendary pilot on the Skyros ball, the Weber would do full damage to him because it would bypass his resistance. Um, but here you see my corrosion does damage and it forces him again to drop his uh, his act. <laughs> he dropped to drop his ball state. He needs to go in for a ball brawl, <laughs> not ball brawl, and uh, and fight me. Uh, but uh, even that didn't work because I basically just outmaneuvered him with this fast movement that the Dagon has. Um, and uh, he was not really able to hit me very accurately. Uh, and also my phase shift helped me also. So let's keep going. Uh, we have overdrive running, which is great. That is for maximum damage. Uh, also that guy, maybe he even dies from it. Let's see. Yep, he did. <laughs> One shot, corrosion added and tuck. I really like how quickly this weapon adds corrosion to the enemy. It makes it very interesting. Um, but I don't know what, what the reason is why the weapon still performs so bad. You know, I, I already recorded a video to the most ridiculous thing the, uh, in War Robots now. It's the new Tamer, right? Uh, the Tamer weapon. It's the light version. What's the medium called? Um, I know the heavy is called Subduer. We've seen it on the test server. Tamer is the light version. Uh, one of those new weapons that adds the rust effect. Uh, I'm not sure how the medium version is called right now. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't matter because I've run I've run six times the me uh, the light version Tamer here on the Dagon, fully maxed with maximum damage skills. And let me tell you, I can one tap Ohokochis in one clip in, in five seconds or four. A whole full Ohokochi just goes bye bye. Can you believe it? This is so ridiculous. These weapons are so broken. And again. Um, it seems Pixonic is shifting away from overpowered robots to overpowered weapons. Have you noticed that? Uh, the Titan Newton itself, it is broken with its choke ability, but other than that, maybe it has a bit too much health, but other than that, it would be okay. Uh, then Fulgur Tonans and the choke are the problems. Um, and now comes the new Titan Eiffel into the game soon, yeah? The Titan is really well balanced. It's completely well balanced. There's nothing overpowered on it at all. It has a unique thing. It has more weapons than we've ever seen on the Titan, but at the same time, it exposes itself to firepower when trying to use them. So it's like an upgraded version of an Aoming, and it's it's not broken at all. It's actually very well balanced, but what will be broken probably will be the new Titan mach heavy machine guns, uh, homing machine guns, the, the homing bullet. Uh, machine guns coming as Titan weapons now. They will probably be broken and, and offering a ridiculous amount of damage output. That's what it looked like on a test server. And then Fulgur Tonans, those weapons make everything broken. Even if you put it on a Nao Ming, it will be now broken Nao Ming because of those weapons, right? And now comes Tamer and uh, Subduer and uh, and all these, these, these new weapons. And they are freaking broken and make every setup broken. So what I think it's if the case is here that we're seeing Pixonic change strategy, going away from two bro two overpowered and broken robots to more broken weapons instead, which is something Pixonic probably doesn't really like to do so much, because you know weapons you can always put them on a new robot, right? You get the weapons once, and then you can just slap on any robot you want, and they will be back there for you, um, uh, unless of course they nerf the weapons. I guess this is what's going to happen then. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I feel like there's this change of strategy happening here because it, it just seems that way. Um, and how did I even get to this topic? <laughs> I don't know, we're running Sting. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, somehow I, I still got to this topic. Yeah, I got to this because I recorded the gameplay with um, with the Tamer six times. And I, and I realized how broken a weapon setup can be. Because this year, I would argue it is not doing bad, right? I don't think we can, uh, I, I think we can all agree that the weapon, how it is performing here, these six stings, they're not terrible. They're doing okay. I mean, they're not doing great, but they're doing okay. It's not like they're ridiculously underperforming and they're definitely not overperforming. Um, but if you compare this to other weapon setups, it, they're definitely underperforming, uh, like the new Tamer, right? Um, if you compare it to Magnums, for example, I think it would be okay. If you compare it to uh, the cryo rockets, it would probably be okay. Uh, if you compare it to Gust and Halo, 
mm, it would probably be okay because Gust and Halo have much less range, right? You have to get much closer, but they will do more damage when they are close. So it seems like a well-balanced trade between the weapons here. Um, but yeah, it always depends on what you compare it to. And Tamer, there's no way to compare it against that. That's an upcoming video too. I already cut, cut, uh, no, not, didn't, I didn't cut the gameplay. I just recorded it. So my, uh, my time uh, cutting the video into nice action montage for you has not yet happened. And the commentary will have to be recorded. Uh, I think I may do this right after this video. Not sure if this is tomorrow's video. Maybe I put something else in between because I don't want to just do dra a dag and robots all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's see what I can come up with. Maybe another top three comparison. The thing is, I want to do the top three tanks or top five tanks, but I've heard there's a big news coming for the Fenrir, a new legendary pilot that will make him get resistance that is, that is unmitigatable. And when that comes, it will basically make my top three or top five tight tank video obsolete if I haven't put it in there. I have to wait for that legendary pilot on the Fenrir to come into the game so that we can test it. Uh, and then I could make um, make my top Titan uh, tank video, not Titan, top tank video. All right, so that's what I'm currently waiting for. Otherwise, I would have already given you the top, uh, top three or top five tank video, best tanks in the game. But if something drastic is about to change in that, then uh, I better better hold on to it for a moment and record it when, that's, when it comes. Now this crisis robot right there, I seen him the whole time and I was very careful. I, I tried to bait him. I was trying to show myself, make him think, aha, I can shoot him. But so that I get back into cover immediately as he opens fire so I can shoot him for a second later. But he uh, apparently he understood my strategy because he wouldn't fire. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. So, now we're dead. Alright, so ladies and gents, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, tell me what you think about stink. Uh, does it stink? <laughs> Same joke I did last time. Does it stink? Or, or does it sting? <laughs> so yeah, catch you in the next one, Manny. Signing off. Bye-bye.